Welcome back to my channel. Today, what I have for review is my Rolex Datejust 1601. It was manufactured in 1971, and everyone that knows me knows I have a obsession, a passion for watches, uh, specifically uh, vintage watches, but I love them all. So, what I have right here is the original box and the service box. Now, a quick backstory while I was looking to purchase this watch was uh, a couple of options was on the table. One was the Datejust, another was the Explorer, and I also had my eyes on some uh, Submariners. But we all know that the subs are pretty expensive, especially if you're looking along the lines of the vintage models. Um, so anyways, I ended up going with the Datejust two-tone. Uh, the reason why I chose a two-tone was to, it goes with everything. Whether I'm wearing a gold ring or a silver ring, I like to interchange certain uh, jewelry. And the two-tone just has that look, that mature, classic look. So that's what I was looking for. As far as the dial, let's take a look. The dial that I went with is a champagne dial. Preferably, I wanted the blue dial. It's more rare, it's more desirable, but the champagne dial is also a gorgeous piece. Um, there are other ones, whereas the matte black dial I also like, but this was my second uh, pick, and I was able to pick it up for a really good price at an estate sale. Uh, the estate sale, um, he negotiated with, with me um, a price that I think was a deal, almost a steal <laughs> and as far as once you look at the market value of it I basically could make a profit of 30 40 percent so once that takes and you take that in, into consideration um, it was a deal um, so let's take a closer look at the Datejust 16 so here it is up close the champagne dial and everything running to perfection as I said, it came with the service box and it was just proof that the previous owner had it serviced. So the box is original, the watch is original, and the clasp is original. Let's take it out of the box. The clasp. 100% original. The only thing that's aftermarket is the bracelet. As you may know, Jubilee bracelets tend to stretch and the bracelet that it came with was very, very stretched and took away from the watch. So I had to replace the bracelet. I love the, the raised crystal. It's acrylic. So they tend to scratch. Um, that didn't deter me from this model, but it's something that I'm always aware of when I'm wearing the watch. Um, at certain angles, you can see the scratch. There's only one, two, two scratches. That's somewhat deep but can easily be polished out it also came with the rolex tag here we go so this model since it's manufactured in 1971 it's the non quick set which means when you have to set the date it's going to be more work. Uh, it's not a big deal to me as long as uh, it keeps good time and it keeps the date. Uh, if it was, wasn't was functioning correctly, then I'll have to do all the adjustments more frequently, but so far it's keeping excellent time and have no issues with it. I've had it for about, I'll say a year and a half now, maybe going on two, I'll say a year and a half. and it's been keeping excellent time. 
It's my daily watch. I wear it every day, every single day. And the compliments, the eyes that always get drawn to it um, shows that it is a stunning piece. Now let me just put it on the wrist so you guys can see. Very nice fit. Now when it comes to watches, having the right size on the wrist is important to me. I'm glad it came with the original box. Very nice condition. Came with the hang tag. And also the service box. What came in the service box is the Rolex little cloth that you can use to clean the watch. The handbook, the factory service handbook. And what I don't have, oh, I actually do have it. It came with two Rolex spoons. Uh, now this was the first time I actually saw one of these and uh, I thought they were interesting pieces. I uh, plan on keeping them, excuse me. I plan on keeping them, but um, I don't know, if they go up in value, I might have to sell at some point. I love the two-tone bracelet, Jubilee bracelet. Uh, there's other options, of course. There's leather straps. Um, I do have uh, interest in going that direction at some point, you know, interchanging, depending on my outfit. Uh, I do like the black or the brown uh, alligator strap. Uh, it is something that's gonna come in the, in the future. Uh, as far as bracelets, metal bracelets, uh, the Jubilee is number one. The Oyster bracelet also has my attention. Uh, I might pick one up, but I do want it to be original. And if you know uh, Rolex bracelets, original, authentic, they're gonna be expensive. So, uh, that's gonna have to wait until a deal falls on my lap. Now, just really quick, the backstory on how I saw the watch and how I went about getting, getting the watch. So, I was online, Craigslist, eBay, all these sites, estate sales, and it was all about comfort, where I felt comfortable making a purchase and where I felt like I would receive a deal. Now, Craigslist is sometimes a sketchy place to buy a Rolex. There's a lot of scammers out there that would sell replicas. And eBay, eBay is a good place, but I just felt like I needed to feel the watch. I needed to touch the watch before making the purchase. So the other option I had was pawn shop, which wasn't something I wanted to do. So I went on a website where there is different ads for estate sales. So this one came up and the interesting thing is till this day I haven't seen another estate sale with a Rolex in this condition. They just none. So I pretty much am blessed to be able to have picked this up for the price that I picked it up at. So, anyways, I called the guy. I said, hey, I see your watch. And so it was a one day estate sale. So he said, hey, uh, I'll be available and free on Saturday between such and such time. And I have a few people coming to see it. So I'm like, okay, where are you located? He told me, and it was three and a half, four hours away, highway. Not 
local roads and highway, just straight highway. So it was far. So I told him, hey, I'm coming from Miami, so it's gonna take me this amount of time. If I say I'm coming, that means I'm serious. That means do not sell the watch. So I went up there, saw it, and fell in love with it. The only thing that drew me away from it was the bracelet being stretched and in bad condition. But besides that, everything else was perfect. Uh, I wasn't able to take it to a jeweler because of a time constraint, but just by looking at the watch with my expertise, I knew it was authentic. Came back home with it, did the purchase, came back home, and that night, even though I felt confident on the spot making the purchase, you know, when you get into bed and you're just laying there thinking, did I make a good deal? Buyer's remorse, whatever you want to call it. And for some reason, I started doubting if it was real, if it was authentic or a replica. So tossing and turning, woke up, went on to Google, different forums, different reviews to see if this watch was original. So that's needless to say, I slept maybe two hours, three hours maybe. So as soon as I woke up, of course, the first thing on my mind was the watch and I had to take it to a dealer. So I went to a jewelry store and I said, hey, can you open this watch for me, please? Really nice place, really nice people. Took it right away, opened it up, and soon as I saw it, soon as I saw the inside of this watch, I knew it was real. I knew it was an authentic Rolex Datejust. <clears throat> That's all it takes. Now, I wouldn't advise anyone else to do what I did, which is to purchase a watch of this value and not know 100% that, they may not even, not know 80% that it's original because to lose that type of money would, for most people, would be a headache. So, after having it open and seeing the insides, which is what I recommend for everyone to do if you're gonna buy a used or pre-owned watch from a private owner, meet at a jewelry store, have them open it. There's many Rolex authorized dealers and many malls and jewelry and they'll open it for free like unless you know who knows who the salespeople are but as far as opening the watch they will do it for free and that would let you know a hundred percent that the inside the movement is authentic now one thing about this watch that not a lot of people know if they don't know about watches, but they hear all the time that Rolex don't tick, they don't make a sound. Now, this Rolex has a sound. It's a beautiful sound to me. It's a very, very, very fast tick. It's, I forgot how many beats per second, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's a very rapid tick, for example. If it was a tick tock, tick tock, like a quartz watch, that would be a replica, that would be fake. But this has a beautiful sound. It's like, it's like music to me. So guys, I'd like to thank you guys for watching the whole video uh, of this review of my Rolex Datejust 1601. And uh, if you guys would like to ask any questions, you can comment down below. Uh, any suggestions on future watches that I could take a look at um, and also uh, turn your notifications on for future videos that I'll be posting. Uh, like, share and subscribe and uh, have a good day.